convention season is going strong here in 2024 and we just finished having Terrificon in Uncutsville, Connecticut, which included the new exclusive from Valiverse, the Elite Praetorian. So what are my thoughts on it? Stick around, watch the entire video, including my final impressions, and you'll know what to look forward to for Valiverse Series 5. Here for Junkie on Crass and Builds. Hey, this is Mike from Junkie on Crafts and Builds, and this is my 26th impressions video for a Valiverse Action Force product. And what we have here today is the exclusive from Terrificon 2024, the Crimson Shadow Technologies Elite Praetorian. So I had to thank my friend Rollkeeper, who was able to go up to the convention and pick me up a few of these figures. Man, I really appreciate your time and your efforts going through this. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and check this out real quick. We'll look at the blister card. And as we can see, it's nice plastic showing everything with the figure and the majority of the accessories. He is number six in the series five line. So this is the first time we'll really get our hands on a series five figure. Yes, the 100 item, the Bone Collector 2.0 was technically part of series five releases, but it's a lot of reuse. This is an all new mold from Valiverse, so that's why I'm considering this the real first hands-on until we get the Vanguard in hand and we get the driver, the Reaper. So like I said, here's the front of the box, number five, Valiverse, Crimson Shadows, 14 plus. On the back, we have this really cool render of the toy from the product shots of the Valiverse website, Crimson Shadow across the top, we have three action points and here is the combat profile for you to look at if you wish with the packaging out of the way let's get this figure out of the blister card and start checking out what series five is going to hold for us out of the packaging the elite praetorian shows us what we can expect for not only the regular release of the crimson shadow praetorian but what we can expect in regards to engineering and sculpt changes for series five and moving forward in the action force line but before we go into the figure, let's go through the accessories. Starting from the top, we know that Valiverse provides us a variety of hands, and that's what we're going to look at here. Starting with the default trigger hands that are on the figure, and they are vertically hinged. It's a really interesting gunmetal type of plastic here. Not swirly, but you can see this sculpted detail here on the fingers and the hand in and of itself. And an item to note with the trigger hands and the other hands with this figure is that the plastic is a much softer feel when putting weapons and items into the hands. Um, it's a lot easier to maneuver around the figures than in previous waves. Like I said, there's been a change throughout, the, throughout each of the series releases in regards to this, but these are the most pliable hands I felt in the Action Force series to this point. The next pair of hands we have are the item holding hands. Now these are different though than what we've seen in the past because these are also vertically hinged compared to the horizontal hinge that we've seen in previous waves. And while that plastic for the hands may be a little softer, they still have no problem holding weapons in the item, in the item hands or the trigger hands securely. Not coming off at all. The final two pairs of hands, I have one of each on here, is the C cupping hand and also the fist. Both of these are on horizontal hinges. Hey, sorry to interrupt the regular impressions with the spliced in portion, but after the impressions video was filmed and I was putting this figure away, I wanted to make sure I pointed out some nuances with the hands. And we're going to look at, starting here with the uh, cupping hand, and if you notice, it's at a slight angle now, um, definitely not straight. So you can see where like, you know, this, this kind of angle, uh, again, that's kind of a really cool nuanced, uh, 
approach to the figure in regards to how how you can actually have the figure cupping the weapon or other items. So just so we know here, the item holding hand, which is now, like I said, on a vertical hinge, is pretty straight. Same with the default trigger hand. And finally, the fist, pretty straight. Um, don't see that little bevel angle, but just want to point out the, the nuance of the cupping hand, really. That's it. Back to the regular impressions. Regarding weaponry, we'll start small and work our way up with this newly sculpted pistol. Again, all black plastic, no real detail or anything on it. Again, it's not the Maxim 9, so everyone be happy. And we have a blast effect port in the front of the barrel, as always. For the pistol, we have an integrated holster here on the right leg. Uh, again, in that gunmetal metallic uh, plastic, and it sits in there just fine. And as always, it can definitely hold a blast effect quite easily, and he can do a cross arm stance, and we'll go through the articulation a little later on, but that's a really nice touch. Next, we have this futuristic kind of DMR style assault rifle here with a magazine in the back here towards the stock. Two grips. Again, simple black plastic. And the magazine is removable. And the Praetorian has three additional magazines which attach to this left side magazine storage of note before anyone gripes and complains. They are keyed. See this notch here? It kind of goes with the notch on the magazine in and of itself. I found it easiest to kind of slide it forward facing back. Now, while they don't fall out easily, I will say as you manipulate the figure, it is quite easy to start sliding them all around. So that means they are prone to falling out and being lost. So again, be careful, make sure you're putting them in the right way. Also note the magazine has a actual top and bottom with this little lower part here. And note in the weapon to insert the magazine, it is actually keyed up in here. So before you complain that it doesn't fit, make sure you're putting it in right to start. And to me, I do consider this weapon kind of like the default weapon of choice for my Praetorians. The final weapon we have is this large assault rifle with integrated grenade launcher. This has no magazine to pull out. There is a blast effect part for the bottom part for the grenade. And here we are showing it that it can sport two blast effects simultaneously. Moving on to the melee weapon side, we have this new photonic sword blade attachment. This is all translucent blue with a gunmetal and black paint accents on it. The blade does not come off. This is all one piece. Um, kind of big from in my opinion, but you know, if we're doing this pseudo uh, realistic military, and this is new technology. I'm sure, you know, this is this is going to be a little bit bigger in real life. I mean, what are you expecting? A lightsaber? And on the Praetorian forearms, left and right, we have this slot that's cut into it that allows you to connect the blade easily. And again, nicely tolerance. It's not going to come out. Um, but yeah, it is kind of, a, kind of a bulky thing when you look at it. The next pair of accessories here are kind of like the, the defensive uh, system for the Elite Praetorian, and that is a pair of photonic shields, translucent blue plastic with multiple holes in the shield to handle these four blast effects that come with the figure. And again, you can see that it's supposed to be projecting out from the Praetorian. So nice firm plastic, not flimsy at all. And we have ports at the forearm and shoulder on either side of the Praetorian that you can plug these in. Looks kind of cool. The fact that you can put two of them on one arm and kind of have this larger uh, kind of scene where he's deflecting more rounds is pretty cool. You have a port in the back that allows you to plug this in. So it's kind of cool. It's, a, it's definitely one of the things that was uh, a highlight in the accessory department for the regular Praetorian. And what's a Valorverse product without a foot stand? Again, this is all translucent blue with that gunmetal paint across here. 
Emblem of the Shadow, Prince and Shadow uh, Company. And instead of four, we now have six foot pegs, as well as the slot for the combat profile. And here's a final shot of all the accessories we just went through. Let's go ahead and start looking at the aesthetics of this figure. Aesthetic wise, I think this is going to be an example of where once the fans get these figures in hand for Series 5, um, I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting. A lot of fans, especially the diehards, are going to be ecstatic for it and take it no matter what. Those that are more, if you have this Elite Praetorian, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are and why you're at it. Let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, and your two seconds of hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell will help me out immensely as I go towards that milestone number. So going into this figure, um, definitely see, you know, this this is going to be a different a different type of path, especially for this. We've never seen anything from the Crimson Shadow yet uh, other than the weapons team. So starting with the aesthetics, we have this really new sculpt. For this version, we see that, you know, there's plastic. This plastic, like I said, is kind of like a gunmetal-ish metallic plastic, and that paint is or that color is followed on in the accent paints on the figure. I think it's going to look better with the, with the regular release of the Praetorian because you're going to have more definition of where this figure is actually, uh, I don't know, all of us need eyes or something. Maybe that's what this is. I think this is all part of the framework of the head. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Uh, again, sculpt work goes all the way around. Now, I will say when we go to articulation, the neck... For this, seems okay, but when we start doing any sort of swapping, you're going to notice a bit of a difference here. Um, going down into the body part it itself, again, this is all translucent plastic with accent paints here, and we have the Crimson Shadow uh, emblem tampographed on this uh, right breast area. Uh, arms really nicely uh, decoed. We have an accent here going into the shoulder. This uh, shoulder piece here is glued into the bicep piece. And again, this is all attached and then painted here at the double jointed elbows. So then we have this interesting torso piece here with uh, accents on the side for pipes and tubes and all sorts of machinations. There it is from the back. We have this port. Maybe that's a power port. Maybe that's a solar port. It's the photon emitter for the uh, shield. Whatever you want. Going down. Now we do have this waist piece that seems very large. And that kind of can be a detractor for some people because when you start getting into articulation, you're going to see a big old gap here in this uh, in this waist piece. Inner workings here. Uh, moving down to the body, through the body here, we got these really intricate sculpted legs on drop downs. We have the two different pieces glued to the side of the upper legs here. Going down to this piston armored piece here for the knees. And again, they're double jointed, but notice the sculpt kind of prevents this from going back much further. Inside, if you can tell behind the translucent kneecaps, we have a left and a right joints here for the knees. Going down, the sculpt is continuing on here to these newly sculpted feet. But now that we've gone through that, let's see how well this new articulation turns out for the Praetorian. So we're going to go through articulation and we're going to start right at the top, which is where the newest change in the Valiverse engineering has taken place. Now in, in series one through four, we've had the static neck to a ball hinge, but this is going to be the first time we actually have a ball, a ball and then a combination of the ball hinge. All right, so here we go. Here is the new engineering for the Valverse figures. As you can see, it definitely has some range down. Not much back for the bottom peg, but that's where the ball hinge comes into play. And it can definitely go back that far and then forward that far. It's on a soft detent ratchet. So with the head back in place, we can articulate forward that far. Using the combination, we can articulate back that far so it can look up fairly well 
Now, what else can we have that we haven't had before? It's kind of like that nuance here for a tilt. So that's using the ball peg and then the hinge up here is kind of static, but that we do get an additional new range of motion as well as the typical 360. Now, again, because of this sculpt, you might be saying, well, it's limited and all this other crap. This is an Android. We don't know what the other figures in this series are going to look like. So until I get the Vanguard Reaper in hand, this is what I got to work with. And I think it's more than enough to start out with. Moving up to the shoulders, again, we have this uh, armor piece glued to the bicep. And you can it's flexible enough that you can move up here that you should be able to get pretty much your standard T-pose. This, this one here is just a little tight. So you can get almost a, a 90 for the T-pose. Um, and again, 360 around. And what you notice here is this really substantial butterfly. And again, without heating it up, we have a really easy range of motion here. And again, like, I, like we said here earlier, we have double jointed elbows, torso. Again, double ball peg system. You can get 360 around on the upper torso ball joint here. You can get a waist swivel. You get a nice deep bend down, so you can get a fair amount down. And with the sculpt, you can get that far back, which I think is a pretty decent range. Moving down, we have drop hips. You got a thigh swivel that goes into that that far around to that far with that drop hip you can get a fairly uh, high kick uh, not much in regards to the uh, split and like I showed you earlier we have the double jointed knees again the sculpt kind of prevents it from going back up too far what we do not have is a calf or boot swivel for this figure all the articulation for the lower leg is going to be on this uh, ball peg universal for the feet. Now with that, you can get a good click down, a fair click up before it goes into the sculpt here. You have rotation, 360 around. And what you don't really have, and this is kind of what we've seen with the Swarm Trooper, you don't really have a lot of uh, pivot. All in all, a pretty interesting bit of engineering some stuff we're familiar with, but a lot of new stuff that's going to be intriguing for Action Force fans. So that's your articulation. Let's just start going through some comparisons. Okay, here's the fun part of the video where we're going to see how the Elite Praetorian stands up with what we have existing in not only Action Force, but some other lines as well. Who knows what androids we may find. But uh, also note, there is a minor item that I've had issues with when I was going through articulation and such. And this one leg, the pivot doesn't really want to stay. So you can kind of see he has a, has a bit of a foot defect. Um, and that, again, once you press him down a little bit, it's not, well, I'd be lying to say if it's not noticeable, but you can see down here, it kind of is. But uh, that's the QC that I've seen so far. We'll start out with some male bucks in the Action Force line. We have our 100 item, the Bone Collector here, as well as the SDS version of Condor. Like I said, he's about half a head taller, so he's probably about roughly six and a half inches tall to the top of his head, which is probably what we're gonna see with the Atlas figure. And to show even more size variants, we have him with the Warpath Eclipse, and definitely you can see he does stand over her. And here he is, the Marvel Legends Black Widow. Here's a male Marvel Legends body. And here he is with a classified series Cobra Bat. But uh, yeah, so if you're trying to intermingle or with the lines, if you are allowed to cross pollinate, I know that might offend some people right now, but uh, you can definitely do it here. So final impressions, and a disclaimer before we get into it. Here we go. As you can see, I have three Elite Praetorians here. The other two I opened up, I had similar issues with this foot. So there is a slight imperfection in QC with this figure, with that foot. It has a slight bow upwards, 
and that is somewhere along here in the engineering of the joint. Secondly, most important, this figure, I do highly recommend you heat up the shoulders before manipulating a lot. The reason I say that is these other two figures that I opened up, when I started maneuvering the shoulders, they're more tight than the one that I've shown in the video so far. And with this more pliable translucent plastic, the arms were coming off at the bicep joint. Not breaking, just coming loose. So with a little heat, I was able to plug them back in and with a little more heat and a little shock oil, I can definitely get loose, get these shoulders loosened up. So before you start pulling out everything and crapping all over Valiverse, just be aware, I face those and I'm a fan or whatever you want to call, shill, whatever. There's a disclaimer. Okay, so with the Elite Praetorian, it's an interesting look in what we are going to see, not only with the re regular release of the figure, but what we could potentially see in regards to engineering throughout Series 5 and beyond. The new sculpt work on the Praetorian is really awesome. It's really intricate. It opens up a lot of doors for customizers to put a little more detail, a little more life into this. And I assume when we see the regular Praetorian come out, so that's cool. I do like the engineering on this figure. I like the accessories, the inclusion of like these energy weapons and the ability to port them onto the arms and back are pretty cool. The articulation overall is really smooth, especially at the butterfly joints. Um, you get a lot of range with the cut of this, of this figure sculpt. The neck, I feel the range is good. So that's the plus. Cons, I don't think this is gonna be a fair representation yet of what we're gonna see, but if the engineering and the tolerances are the same for the regular Praetorian as the Elite, there are gonna be some parts you definitely wanna heat up. And so far, the only thing I had a challenge with is the shoulder joints. Going up into a T-pose, the tolerance is very tight. Things that you would expect to be tight that aren't pulling the hands off of the Praetorian forearms. Easy as all get up. In fact, I would say it's just as easy as the other exclusive we had, which was the Swarm Tracer and the 100th figure of the Bone Collector 2.0. Some of the articulation and the sculpt decisions do kind of limit things. We're used to having a lot more range in the knees with our human figures that you're not gonna get as well with the Praetorian. And that is just due to sculpt. Overall, I'm happy to get this figure. I, I'm happy to see what we can expect from this highly anticipated figure in series five. So that's everything I have for the Elite Praetorian. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And like I said earlier, please take a second to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Right now, I want to close this out with saying I got a big vehicle in and I'm eager to get it out of the box. So stick around for that next Valiverse impressions video. Thank you guys for watching again and we'll talk again soon. Bye.